Friends, welcome to the very first comic book shopping with me of the year, and I hope you're ready for some London shenanigans. Hello, friends, and welcome back to the channel, and welcome to our very first comic book shopping video of the year. Now, this video has been filmed for a while. I was sifting through old footage, trying to see what I could scramble up, put together, to still put up for you guys that I maybe filmed last year, and it was left unfinished, and I found a comic book shopping with me video that I filmed while in London of June of last year and it is still not up for you guys to watch and so I decided to put all of that b-roll together, film an intro, film a haul portion at the end, and give you guys all of the London goodness of the book shopping I experienced at Blackwell's Books. Now Blackwell's is an independently owned bookstore. The store I went to was rather small but honestly such a good stock of books and I love smaller bookshops just because it's easier to find the books, find the stock. You can tell that when I got to Blackwell's, the video was very impromptu. I was not carrying my camera with me, so all of the b-roll is filmed on my phone. I think there's still something so organic and so cool about that, and so I thought again, putting up all of this b-roll and all of this footage together for you guys could be fun. So let's get into it. Let us go book shopping in Blackwell's and let us see what a girl ends up getting. Let Emma know, she will for sure be watching and waiting. Do you want to show the people what you're getting? Lore Olympics. <laughs> Lore Olympics. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. we had to delete what for what? Oh yeah, I had to delete Tapas and Webtoon because I was out of storage for Harry. <laughs> Harry Styles, that is. Harry Styles and yeah. Priorities. So instead of re-downloading the app for free, I'm buying the fucking book. <laughs> Volume 1. How to Clear Your Family. Lovely. Hilarious title. Lovely title. Oh my god, these outfits. And we are back with a huge toad bag, which I absolutely love. I think out of all the toad bags I got on this trip, this is probably one of my favorites, if not my favorite. So we have got a big toad bag and plenty of books in here. Like I did not remember just how many books I had bought in Blackwell's, but apparently I got one, two, three, four, five books in there. And then I got gifted something really cool because at the time I went to London, Yellow Face by RF Kuang had just come out and Blackwell's had this really cool journal for yellow face that they were giving out and so the cashier just put this into my bag and I thought that was super cute and super nice so this was the very first thing I didn't buy but I did get as part of my purchase I saw this book and I knew I had to take it back home with me because this was one of my most anticipated releases for 2023 that is Vera Wong's unsolicited advice for murderers I quite like this cover I also really like the US cover but I couldn't help myself just because 
because I was there, I was really, really wanting to get it and I thought it would be a great opportunity to do so. And in this one, we follow our main character, Vera Wong, who is in her 60s and she loves tea. She owns a tea shop, but she also loves true crime and investigating murders, playing detective online and trying to give her own grain of salt. And one day she wakes up and she actually finds a dead body inside her tea shop, which is the last thing she was expecting. And although she really shouldn't do it because it's not her job to investigate as a non-police officer, she thinks that she can do a better job than the police. And so she embarks on an investigation all on her own because if there is anything that she believes is that a Chinese mother with nothing else to do will for sure nail this investigation and find the concrete answers for exactly what happened to this person and who the murderer is. I've heard amazing things about this one now that it's been out for a few months and I don't doubt that it's gonna be good. It sounds cozy. I love me a good mystery and it also feels quite comedic and just based on what I've heard of Jesse Sutanto's previous work, I do think it is going to have a slight bit of comedy which with the coziness I think it's gonna be quite a good book. And inside the book apparently there's also a yellow face bookmark. I didn't realize it says bookmarking for my future novel and so we have got a yellow face bookmark too. Honestly quite nice. It seems like there is a bookmark in every single one of the books I got. And then we have got Rebecca and I have been wanting this cover for so long. I have seen the US covers. They're not pretty. And so when I went to London, I knew that this was one of the books I was going to get for sure because this UK cover is superior to everything else I've seen out there. And this is Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. I love gothic tales, okay? That is one of the things I have come to appreciate about literature more and more in this past, I'd say year and a half. Last year, I read Wuthering Heights and alongside other books that one of my friends has recommended to me, Rebecca is alongside them. So when I first heard about this book, I thought the main character's name would be Rebecca, but apparently not. We follow our main character who is a paid companion for an elderly woman. And while they are traversing and doing their thing, she ends up meeting this incredibly handsome guy called Maxime and they fall in love. He very randomly proposes to our main character and then he whisks her away to his Cornish state and while she is there she figures out that as all things go in a gothic tale that she doesn't know her husband half as much as she thought she did and that every corner of the house they are in has the energy of his late wife named Rebecca and I cannot wait to see what this is about, what's going to go down. I've seen everybody talk about this book in the most positive light when I see anybody talk about it on booktube and so that also on top of my friends really claiming how good this is this is giving me a lot of hope for this one and that I'll enjoy it too if, if all goes wrong and if push comes to shove at least it's a really stunning cover on my bookshelves and I love that this fine is green this next book was everywhere when I went to London I believe it had been recently published because it had highlight tables at every single one of the bookstores I went to there were signed copies loads of copies and by the time that I got to Blackwell's, which was the very last bookstore I went to, I was convinced I'd been seeing it so much that I needed to take it back home with me. Now, I think these days it doesn't have the best rating on Goodreads, if I'm not mistaken, but I still think it's a book that I could really, really enjoy based on the synopsis. And I'm still quite excited about it. And that is Shanghai Immortal by A.Y. Chow. And I love that the main character is half vampire, half fox spirit. It really is the thing that first caught my eye. And it is said that our main character is a royal guard and that when the book is starting she is very used to running errands and just being a lackey for the royals. She doesn't really have an important role aside from messenger or assistant really in any way but then she overhears one of the courtiers saying that they're going to steal a dragon pearl and she believes that this is her one chance to prove herself once and for all and to prove that she is actually really really worthy of something different and something more and then the book basically becomes a race against time as she gets help from a mortal that runs the central bank of hell and she has to traverse hell and mortal Shanghai so that she can figure out exactly what's happening and basically save this artifact from being stolen from the king. It sounds like a really good book so I hope that I do end up enjoying it when I do read it. I am known to be in the minority with the books that people like the most and then I don't end up enjoying it and vice versa. So I'm hoping that this is one of those cases because it sounds promising. Half vampire, half book spirit. Hell 
Pearl, Mortal Shanghai, Immortal Shanghai, a Dragon Pearl. It sounds like a really good time to me. I finally gave in to while I was in London and I decided to get a book that took the world by storm. Everybody seemed to love this book. Everybody seems to have read this book at this point. I have not. And I also prefer the yellow cover that is the UK cover. And this is Everything I Know About Love by Dolly Alderton. I don't know the ins and outs of the memoir. I just know that it is a tale of everyday life, finding a job, traversing your everyday struggles and going on dates and finding love and realizing that potentially the people that you are romantically involved with are not as reliable as you think that they are and tales about your best girlfriends and also a tale about how you are more than enough if all else fails. And I want to read a book like that. I think especially going into 2024 and going through such an arduous journey of self-love and regaining my confidence and healing and eating disorder and still in the journey of that and then on top of that being diagnosed with chronic illnesses and not having any luck in the romance department. I feel like this book is made for me and so let us hope that I <laughs> read this hopefully early in the year so that I can really have a good time with it and potentially love it. Could you imagine I read this earlier in the year and I don't enjoy it? I hope that I do. Can't imagine that I wouldn't so we'll see what happens but aside from the things I mentioned don't know anything but I do think it's a good one. And last but not least I knew I had to get this book while I was in London because I do not, I repeat, I, I do, do not, not like <laughs> the US cover for this book. And I had tried to order the Waterstones exclusive of this book and that for some reason did not pull through. My order was canceled, which I think was very rude of Waterstones. But then after hunting for it high and low because it was not available anywhere when I did go to London, this was the only copy left at Blackwell's. And I have to say it was destiny. It found me, it was fate and we are connected. And that is The Adventures of Amina al Sirafi by Shannon Chakraborty. Now, I have an interesting relationship with Miss Shannon Chakraborty, okay? Let me tell you that. Because I own every single one of her books as of yet, including The River of Silver, which is the City of Brass novella. I have not read the City of Brass series, even though I own all of it. Maybe Amina al Sirafi will be my very first Shannon Chakraborty book. It is said in this book that Amina al Sirafi has gone through everything possibly imaginable. She has gone through the quest, defeated monsters, gone through several husbands, defeated demon lords in the whole nine yards, and she is fully ready to retire into motherhood and nothing to do with the supernatural and to settle into quiet life for assumingly maybe the rest of her days. But then she gets an unrefusable offer for a quest that no one in the right mind would take, would do, would carry through, and she decides to bring the old crew back together to embark on one final adventure together that will be one for the books and for history and that will truly immortalize them as like the biggest best crew ever and so I'm excited about this I have not heard a single negative thing about Amina al Sirafi, and so I'm hoping that maybe this as my first Shannon Chakraborty book will be the best experience there is to experience. I'm also just hoping that this goes well because I don't enjoy sea quests or pirates or anything really to do with books set at sea so this is a double-edged sword so I'm hoping that Shannon Chakraborty pulls through. If she doesn't it, friends? Shannon Chakraborty will be that girl forever. So yes, friends, these are all the books I got while I was at Blackwell's over at Miss London. And I'm very happy that I got all of these. And honestly, I think out of all the hauls I did while I was over there, I have to say, I think this may just take the cake. I think this may be the favorite haul out of all of the books and hauls I did because I think this array of books is very, very iconic, if I do say so myself. So I'm excited to get all of these read. We'll see how many of these I actually read this year. I'm hoping that maybe most of them, if not all of them, because I do think at least four out of five of these books have the possibility of being read quite, quite quickly into 2024. And that is all that I've got for you guys today. That is our very first come book shopping with me for the year. And also, sadly, our very last come book shopping with me in London. I'm so sad that the videos are done, but hopefully I can come back to you guys with some other really, really cool come book shopping with me videos this year. We'll see about that. Stay tuned, stay ready, because it may just be happening. Don't forget to give this video a massive thumbs up down below if you did enjoy it and comment down below. Have you acquired any books recently? Did you get any books for Christmas? Any books to start out the new year? Let a girl know if you've gotten anything recently, if you've read any of these books. How are you guys feeling about the start of year? Let a girl know all of that down in the comments and subscribe if you haven't done so already for more bookish content like this. And if you do want to support the channel further, I'm just saying it's a new year. It's the start of the month. Pledging to Patreon may just be one of the 
the best things you do this year. You've got a ton of different perks from live shows to book clubs to game nights, to a Discord server, tons of interaction, and tons of other things happening over there that I'm sure you guys won't want to miss out on that are either book related or not. We have got a month long readathon coming this February, so I'm sure you guys won't want to miss that because it's going to be, I think, the best readathon we have done so far. I've got many cool things planned for it. And alongside that, you'll find all of the other links to my social media, including my podcast, which is currently available on Apple Podcasts and also Spotify. So make sure that you follow the pod, listen to the pod, share the pod with your friends, and hopefully you'll find some really good stuff in there as well, book related and not too. Love you guys so, so much, and I shall see you in the next video. Ah!